Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Today we are going to look at some amazing uh, legacy kind of comics here with Frank Frazetta's Death Dealer. But first, Ed, what's new? Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. I'm serializing my Red Room comics up there as we speak. Issue 1 is up there completely right now, and issue 2 begins next week. The perfect time to uh, dip into Red Room this time of year in a, in a complete story. Exactly. Uh, so three bucks to get you the archive. New, new strips every Tuesday. This is what I was working on this past week, man. That's like, a great piece. Yeah, the, telling new little short story, man. And look at that fucking stack. I'm very proud of all that work that's been done so far this summer. Three bucks to get you to archive. New strips every Tuesday. There'll be a print edition in 2021. And if you like Death Dealer and the carnage that we're going to get into here, you'll find lots more of that in Red Room. That's goddamn right. My latest comic, Octobriana 1976, the world's first blacklight comic printed in fluorescent ink, is out and available everywhere and selling quick. So if you want to add this to your collection, pick it up sooner rather than later. And if you are a reader on Comixology, it's now available on Comixology, all three editions in one. And uh, the Process Zine, also available on Comixology, 350 pages of all the drafts, scans of original art, and really the uh, how I made this comic. So Frank Frazetta made a painting, and it, it's a very popular painting. Yeah, and I don't know if any of his paintings aren't popular, but certainly Death Dealer, uh, one of the iconic works of Frank Frazetta's illustrious career. Glenn Danzing uh, gets the rights to some of this work in order to make comics about it, and uh, it secures Death Dealer. We, we talked about this in a, uh, in a Wizard episode that was actually promoting this comic, and Frazetta was talking about what he likes about Bisley, he talks about the uh, licensing agreements with uh, with Danzig. So this is one of the paintings. I think there are maybe four in total of Death Dealer. He even uh, did one in like 1990. Okay, maybe more than four. Is, I'm not sure how many there are. How about that? One of the iconic ones, of course, is Death Dealer sitting on top of that giant black horse. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to play a role in this story. But this is the painting. You see his signature. And as we dive into it, you can see the credits. This is from 1995. And uh, Danzing, the publisher of Verotic, that's who publishes this book. And you can see story by Glenn Danzing, art by Simon Bisley, one of my favorites. Um, you know, I came to be a fan through Lobo and lots of other work since then. One of the pieces on his resume that would make sense here is Slon Slonye? Pat Neal said Slain. <laughs> <laughs> so has some experience doing barbarian type comics and, and violent barbarian comics. And you can see his rendition of Death Dealer here. In glorious black and white. Look at the Corbin energy to this piece right there, man. Also, Dan Danzig, by the way, is a really good, good curator. We'll say good editor. He's got a good eye for for visuals. You know, he he used the Lee Eli the famous Lee Elias uh, image for for the Die Die My Darling Misfits uh, cover that that just sold for like a hundred thousand bucks on Heritage Auction two weeks ago. Yeah, and if you go through Verotic, you'll see some very noteworthy cartoonist, uh, visual artists that he's employed. Yeah, the the, Crim the Crimson Ghost, you know, he the, the Misfits logo comes from Famous Monsters of Filmland. Everybody knows the Sam Hainskull is uh, is Michael Golden. Um, he's just, he's got a very macho, butch eye for muscles and violence and guts. An obvious fan of comics. Yeah. Uh, noteworthy, Mark Pacella on Colors. We would know him as inker on uh, some of the X Force issues, the later Rob Liefeld X Force issues, I believe, with Dan Panosian. He he drew this stuff as well. So let's dig in. There is not a lot of story in this comic, as you might imagine. Nor should there be. No, exactly. It's mostly a barbarian tell. It's kind of an origin of uh, at least one Death Dealer, and so I think there might be blood on every single page. Listen, when Danzig is putting money down for a comic page, you better fucking deliver. <laughs> so I'll just kind of flip through. If, if anything comes to mind, Ed, stop me. But otherwise, we'll just kind of progress through this um, because it is a pretty straightforward story. We start out, this is the character that we're going to follow as he kind of goes through fighting this horde of you know, fellow barbarians, maces, axes, things of that nature, until he comes upon that black mare that we associate with the death dealer. Jimmy, just looking at this spread right here, I mean, I, I said it from the jump, but the, the Corbin energy is is all over this, down to the Mark Pacella color. Like, look at that uh, last panel on that left left page with the yellow, the purple, and the red. I don't think of Mark Pacella as a colorist at all, but 
I like that a lot. Yeah, I don't know what else he's colored. Um, like I said, I, I knew him from around that X-Force era. I think he did Doom 4 or something like that. I think he did something there with, with Image and, and Liefeld what, Studio. One of, one of my first, uh, one of my first, first comics was, uh, was an Elric miniseries that he drew that was uh, not what you would think of in terms of, uh, you know, it wasn't the Jim Lee type style. So the story up to this point is this barbarian comes out of that battle and starts following that horse. It's this beautiful horse. He wants it to be his. And the horse leads him to this castle where he encounters the, the helmet of the Death Dealer. Uh, real good page here because this is a very, very Frazetta... This is Frazetta tropes, man. I think of like the drapery at at uh, the Death Dealer's feet. I think of that saber-toothed tiger, skulls, and, and this kind of uh, Robert E. Howard um, set, setting. Um, it's all here. So I yes. wonder if this is like, this is a chance for Bisley to get paid to microscopically study what makes Frazetta tick. That's a good point. And probably dancing too. When you're putting together your story, what are you drawing from, right? Look at some other Frazetta paintings. Make sure you get everything in there that, that you possibly can fit. And I think the Corbin, you know, the, the stuff that you're seeing with Corbin, I imagine that's Corbin's reflection of Frazetta on his work. Fair enough. Man, and that's a badass saber tooth. Yeah, it is. It does look really cool. It's it's almost always fun. If, if Bisley's penciling and inking, I'm on board. Yeah. You're going to get some fun stuff. So before he can reach the uh, the helmet, the saber tooth, the watch watch cat saber tooth attacks him. And look at the like the uh, there's like that little gore that's like becoming animated. Yes, that's yeah. a nice little extra touch. That's gonna that's gonna keep happening. That's gonna play a role as as this scene unfolds. But before that, our barbarian gets hold of the axe to kind of like uh, even the fight a little bit, and then hacks that saber tooth top of his head off. That's a pretty cool. I, I dig that that panel because he's going through mid skull, separating the top and bottom jaws. You don't need that mandible jaw. <laughs> and of course, those animated pieces that are coming out that you mentioned a couple pages ago. Now they're the thing that's attacking our barbarian. You know this. This is the way a Robert E. Howard story works. It's just it's just constant stakes, and it's just like just stuff keeps happening like you you're you're not safe anywhere one thing i like with this color is that you're seeing these bright kind of colors instead of browns that i always complain yeah. about or a monochromatic approach it does help your panel stand out you know it makes it very easy to go through a page like this where where you're popping from panel to panel pacella is doing his damnedest to do a court like this is such this is a love letter to hey, corbin why not you know like imagine when they're assembling this comic they may be looking at some Corbin stuff because yeah. he certainly nailed this kind of flavor and that kind of coloring, especially where it's it's more of a, a pop color, that's in a lot of that early Corbin work. This is a for very Frazetta-like composition right here. Yeah, these, these, I don't know what you would call them, they're tendrils of some sort, are pulling him into this helmet, like uh, symbiotically like grafting the helmet onto him. You see him going in through his eyes, eyeballs popping out as these things invade his head drawing the head and the helmet together. I mean, this is pornography to Glenn Danzig. Like, he's <laughs> he's definitely jerking off to this. And, uh, you know, Bisley was a bodybuilder. Just in the history of comics, like, people who draw this kind of musculature and uh, who are, like, this good at it, the artists, is all, they're always bodybuilders. Capolo comes to mind. It makes sense. Yeah, Fr uh, Frazetta comes to mind. Frazetta was a super beefy dude. And we make, we waste no time. There's no, uh, once the helmet's on, that's it. We don't need to reflect on that in any kind of emotional, any growth or anything. Let's go from here to applying it. Yeah, You're yeah. the death dealer now. Take it out for a spin. <laughs> Heads being removed from bodies. Yeah, a lot of splatter. Like, I think Bisley brought splatter to uh, comics. It's funny, this blood effect, too. Because I don't know whether Bisley's drawing that or if that's something that's digitally added. It's uh, it's it's a very, I don't know, almost grafted on top effect. It is. You know? I mean, it clearly is. It's one, it's like this one is, color. This would be like, in my imagination, the one Danzig note whenever all this art works in and he's looking at it, he's like, let's get some more blood on this page. Yeah, yeah. Add some blood on this axe. You know what it is? It's 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 one color. There's no There's no 
modeling to it and there's modeling everywhere else so so it that makes it stand out in that way and it, and it is inc- incongruent like it doesn't it does look extra perhaps a last minute last minute joint <laughs> again blood on every single page man <laughs> it's incredible right it's what biz does look how many arrows are stuck in his leg Stephen platt would have drawn more that's probably true and I, I would have accepted a death dealer by Stephen Platt. He's out there watching and wants to hook up with Danzig for maybe a sequel. Guy, entire torso cut in half. Jim, I find this very inspiring. It's pretty fun, especially for a barbarian book. You know, we looked at Barry Windsor Smith's Conan recently. Uh, of a similar vein. Different execution, but, you know, similar ingredients. Little blood laying, little executioner execution. And a very melodramatic barbarian stance. Like, I think this is perfect. And what it is, once he put that helmet on and I said we went right into battle, that's kind of like the helmet transferring its memories into him. Because here we are cut back post this this, uh, this flashback sequence of gore to his immediate aftermath because you see the saber tooth, top of the saber tooth head laying there. Jimmy, you get mad props for, for keeping up with the story. <laughs> Hard to follow. This is uh, pretty nuts here, where they're they're crucifying him. They're going to execute him on an upside down crucifix. Yeah, that, that sounds like a Danzig note. Yeah, yeah, it's in the caption. He's very metal. Danzig's the writer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder what that means. It's funny too. Like you go from these these naked women succubus type characters that are. Seducing people around him, seducing him, leading him along, you know, follow us. See, this is like, uh, you know, this is Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, which is really just a play on Oedipus, and these are the sirens. See, it's yeah. very, there's, there's many levels at play to this I, I think intricate this is story. Loving Frazetta's work and trying to work in as much stuff from other paintings as you possibly can, because after that, it's the demon horde that's now coming after him. This is what you want. Uh, you yeah, you totally. buy a Death Dealer comic, this is exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, and, 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 and Bisley's, a, Bisley's a drawer, man, so I don't want to see six panels on a page if I can help it. See, yeah. this is one of the famous paintings, like a Bisley version of, of that. Yeah, lots of splash pages. And ultimately, we do get to see that horse. Yeah, see. That helmet head design is really cool. As we see, like the character go through the book, you get to see it in different angles and moving through space. It is a really pretty, pretty effective design. And finally, homage to that another of the Death Dealer paintings. Yes. And then you get little bits. There was a Frazetta book that I guess Verotic put out. Yeah, from uh, pencil sketches and stuff. Yeah, it looks like it. I've never seen this book, but uh, that was one of the pieces that was promoted in that interview. You get a little bit of a, a text piece from Frazetta. You get a little bit of text piece from Glenn, Dan- Glenn Danzing. Purple on black, by the way. <laughs> Breaking some design rules there. Not the easiest thing to read. This is this is the Danzig stuff where uh, I, I really recommend everybody check out the, the video that he did for Danzig 2, Lucifuge, where he keeps this kind of mood lighting and talks about his, uh, his, his Nazi texts that he reads and his Gnostic Bibles and shit. He's a very melodramatic guy. Very self-serious. There's your... Uh... Bisley in his bodybuilding stages reminds me of a uh, Mark Texera body drawing, right? Yeah. Where it's like bigger shoulders but kind of slim down legs and stuff. Uh, and talking, you know, all these notes like from him and Danzing are about Frazetta's work mm-hmm. and, and their thoughts on it. So that's pretty cool to read. Again, the designer, there's some rules being broken here. Yeah, this is the '90s too. This this is like it is. This is like okay, no more copy, co- like uh, no more paste up and mechanicals. We do this shit with the computer, but the creative people don't know how to use the computer. Only computer guys know how to use the computer because it's not that intuitive. Also, right at it's this very moment. expensive. Everybody didn't have one sitting sitting on their desk. Super expensive. If, if this is ninety five, it's probably done in ninety four. Windows ninety five is the one that created a situation where every man can get a computer. So you have to deal with uh, technical people doing this shit. Frazetta, these like head sculpts. They made 75 sets, two grand each. That's, That's a pretty amazing. nice chunk of change. Yeah. And then these are cool. So, you know, like for Zeta fans, you'd always see like the posters, right? Was a was a chunk of, of, yeah. of his business. Here's a bunch of the posters that you can order. Three of the Death Dealer posters available and pictured there to give a little more sense, the, including that iconic standing with the axe that we're going to see uh, 
you know the Bisley end pages are that drawing. I've never seen this one before. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know that one either. That one of him on the horse though is not pictured here for That's some true. reason. Yeah, might have cost extra for that. Might have who knows? Maybe the rights weren't available to that one too. It's possible they were tied up somewhere else. Never know. And then your Verotic checklist of what's available, and uh, there's your Death Dealer Bisley interpretation of that painting. Yeah. Super fun to look at. Let's get an artist edition of this one. Oh, man, that would be sweet. That'd be super sweet. The, Bisley would uh, be perfect for like an artist edition. There's a lot of technique going on. Hey, IDW, you can definitely sell me a copy of that. <laughs> <laughs> Very happy to look through this. Yeah, this is a fun one. Pretty cool. And... You know, getting Bisley on a book like this, it's the perfect fit. Agreed. Agreed. Like, this is an instance where everybody involved is invested in the material in, 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 in some loving way. Looks like they're having fun. Exactly. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when the next vids are available. Octobriana's in stores now. If you can't get your hands on a physical copy, get a digital copy. Comixology. They're up there right now, Jim? Yep. Uh, Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. Three bucks to get you the complete archive to the Red Room comic strip. And uh, issue one is up there now, man. So uh, read it. Give me some feedback. You can sign up for the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. To get, keep up with everything we're doing, you can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. All right, Jimmy, give them those marching orders, dude. Read more comics.